Well, hello and welcome to my studio. Um, today's Friday film is a little bit different because I am going to show you how I create botanical dyes from dead buddleia flowers, basically. Over the past three years, I have been dyeing things with plants from the garden and the immediate sort of area around it. And what I was doing was I was dyeing wool and then knitting it up into this blanket. So each of these stripes, each of the different colours, is a different plant. And today I am going to do Buddleia. And I will show you how I do that. So what you need is Buddleia flowers, some hot water, a pan that you're not going to use for cooking. So this is my dye pan for doing the small bits of wool. And then you need some wool that is mordanted. Um, I'll put a link to a, a, a thing about how you would mordant the wool, but then wet so that it's going into the dye pa pan wet. So Buddleia is an amazing dye plant. And it's one of the plants that kind of found me here about Two years ago, I noticed that a buddleia had self-seeded into my front garden. And this year it produced so many of the sort of like purple flowers that the butterflies really, really love. And I never liked to pick anything that, you know, bees or butterflies or birds are actually actively um, using. But the wonderful thing about buddleia is that even when it's in this dead crispy form, which is what you'll find out now if you go looking, um, it's still a wonderful dye plant. So first thing I'm going to do is just to take those flowers off the stem and put them in my pan. You need probably around about the same weight of the flowers as you do the wool. But realistically, all of these sort of um, instructions about weight of fibre and so on um, are they're guides, really, because it would depend on whether your flowers are wet, whether they're really, really desiccated. These are somewhere in between. Um, and it also depends on the kind of wool that you have. Um, some wools take up colour better than others. The wools that I have in here, it's blue-faced wool. Um, and it's a super wash wool because I want the blanket to be able to be just chucked in the washing machine. Um, it sits usually on the back of my sofa and is pulled around by dogs. So um, it has to be hard wearing. So you can see I've got quite a lot of these buddleia flowers in here. I'm discarding the leaves, but you could actually include the leaves if you want. But what I'm wanting here is a really bright, um, clear colour. This is some buddleia on a uh, cotton thread, which I did for um, a studio club um, kind of live that was yesterday. Um, because the, the in the studio club we've been sort of exploring natural dyeing, botanical dyeing on a really small scale, dyeing embroidery threads in jam jars. There is still time to join if you're quick, um, if you want that particular um, workshop. Uh, you have until the 1st of October. Right, so that's all of my flowers in here. And then I'm going to put some just boiled water I had the kettle on before I started filming, but it's so noisy that um, I thought I'd better, better let it finish its boil. So that's the water in there, really a bit like making soup. And then I am going to add half a dessert spoon. So it's probably about a teaspoon, heat teaspoon of washing soda. And what this does is it makes that liquid that the leaves are in 
alkali. It's optional. I automatically do it with anything that I'm wanting a yellow colour from because I think it really sharpens, brightens, deepens the colours. So, have that. And I'll show you, these are papers, pH indicator papers. You might remember them from chemistry classes. And what these do is it shows the pH of the dipod. If I put it in, you can see it's very blue, and that means that it is alkaline. So what I'm going to do is I am turning on the pan. I'm going to simmer that for 20 minutes, and then I'll come back and we can have a look at the colour. Now, I don't want all of those little flowers getting into my wool. So the next thing that I'm going to do is to strain the pan into this jar. You can see what a lovely colour we have there. Now I have this kind of like bit of muslin and just a, a, a filter funnel. Okay. A little bit at a time. I'm going to save all of the bits of buddleia that are left over in the pan. I might do another dye pan, um, which would possibly give a lighter colour to spread my range. Um, and then eventually it will all go onto the compost heap. Wash out the ends of the colour. You're going to have to lift it up a bit. There we are. Now I might actually have too much liquid in here. So this is my wool. Um, I pre mordanted this wool in about 8% weight of fibres with alum, which is aluminium potassium sulphate. And then I have just been soaking it in this just plain water so that it's all nice and moist and that helps the dye be sucked in. But before you put it into the dye pot, just gently squeeze. You don't want to kind of like ruffle it up too much or it might felt, but just gently squeeze it. Take this and go back into my loop and then you'll see immediately the colour. Look at that lovely depth of colour. Buddy is quite interesting in that it often, when you first put the wool in, it's often kind of quite brownish, but then when you rinse it, it becomes much more yellow. So I'm going to do two skeins. This is blue faced Leicester wool. Um, and it is a super wash wool because I want it to be part of the blanket. I'm leaving that in there until it cools completely. Normally I would leave it overnight but I want to get this filming film finished today so instead I'm just going to leave it for a couple of hours and then I'll come back and see what the colour is. So here we are. I have left this for maybe an hour and a half, I'm quite impatient, and look at what a lovely colour this is. You can tell I, I really like mustardy yellows. So I'm going to take that out of here, squeeze the dye out of it, and then put it into here, which is just um, straightforward water. And you can see, as I said, that brownish colour, as soon as it hits the water, turns a really nice yellow. So, there we go. And then the second skein. Now the reason that I have done two skeins is that I want to show you modifying um, these with iron. Because a lot of the blanket, um, what I've done is I've got one colour and then I've modified it uh, with iron which gives them a, a much kind of 
duller. It's called satining, um, which always sounds a bit sad, really. Um, but it gives you a much more muted, darker, more earthy colour. So I shall put the lid on my jar so it won't spill. And now I'll go and get my big tank of modifier. Okay, this is my tank of iron solution. And what it is, is it's um, water plus some ferrous sulphate. And that's gradually, it goes um, kind of like this metal color, dark color. And the important thing is not to get it onto anything that you don't want it onto, not to get it onto the wood floor, not to get it onto bits of wool, because what it does is it reacts with tannins and it darkens them. So, first thing I'm going to do is take out the skein from the water that I actually want to modify. Squish that all there and put that to one side. And then put that so that can get no iron anywhere near it. Next thing is to put on some gloves um, because if you do the modifying without gloves, you end up with beautiful grey hands and you just look a little bit ill. Um, and I really don't think that it's actually great to have your hands in dye baths the whole time. Um, so I have gloves when I'm doing things with iron. So here is the mustardy yellow. Putting it in here, swirling it round and you can see already it's turned kind of green. So I'm going to leave it in there just for about 30 seconds. Uh, it's turned a nice green, so that's good enough for me. Squish it all out so it's not going to drip all the way across the cabin. Put the lid back on. And now I'll go and rinse this and I'll come back and I'll show you the colour. Both of these skeins are now properly rinsed, but they are still wet. So the colour will lighten a little bit. Um, and tangle that. It's particularly important to rinse the iron one because iron can damage um, wool fibres if it's left on. So this is the plain Buddleia here lovely mustard and then this one is the one that I treated with iron just to turn it into a green. I think it's a particularly lovely green actually and I could have left it in the iron longer and that would have deepened it even more. Um, so I am now going to put these to dry and then I will take a photo of them when they're dry and put it right at the end of this. I have made a download about all of the different steps. It's got the modern recipe for the wool. It's got all of the things that I did to get colour from Budlia. It is underneath here. So do go and grab that if you think that you might want to have um, a go at botanical dye. It's one of these things, it doesn't take very long. It's not actually very messy. Um, it's life enhancing really. If you want to have more of a kind of a, a support for um, bringing creativity and connections to nature into your life, I have called the Studio Club which is um, full of videos like this. We, we have a different kind of topic each month. I do um, videos, I do lives. There is a community so you can ask questions, there's a lot of hand holding. If you're going to be interested in that kind of thing, then do please um, have a look at what the Studio Club is. The link is underneath here. And in the meantime, thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you next week. Have a lovely weekend.